Hi guys, my name is Ben Guilford. I'm the owner of The Firebrick Company, and in this video, we're gonna take you through how to apply the perlite render that makes up the outer dome of your precast oven kit. Right, now it's time to do the perlite render. Uh, you have two options. When it comes to doing the perlite render, we like to suggest two options. The first is the conservative method. The conservative method is for people who haven't done rendering before, uh, basically who aren't super confident with rendering. Uh, in fact, the first option is for pretty much everybody except professionals. Uh, and so th that option, the conservative option, is to apply the render in two or three layers. Okay. Uh, the pro option, if you will, the hardcore option, is to do it all in one go. Right, build up the full 50 mil or two inches of render in one hit. Uh, that's, that's quite an effort, to be honest. Uh, that's, that's a lot of work. And again, it's not something we recommend for people who haven't done a lot of rendering before. The reason being, when you're applying such a thick layer, the vertical sections will have a tendency to want to fall off, to want to slump off. You have to be able to mix the render to an incredibly sticky consistency, which is really only possible to do with a mixing drill. Uh, it's very difficult to get to that consistency using uh, a shovel. So anyway, long story short, two options, but the conservative way is the method that we recommend, uh, and we're gonna take you through that method now. Now, first thing is just to go through the tools you're gonna need. So the first thing is your polystyrene float. So this comes with the kit, it's part of it. Uh, and it, I know it looks kind of like a bit of packaging material, which is why we, we print float on the back in giant letters. Uh, but it's actually quite a special bit of polystyrene in that it has the curve of the dome cut into this face. So when later on we're doing our final coats of render, we can actually use the float to shape the render to help us get a nice round surface on it. Okay, so that's going to be very important. Uh, you're going to want your rubber gloves uh, because we're, dealing, we're handling uh, the perlite which is mixed with cement, lime and sand. Uh, and the cement and lime are very alkaline. We don't want alkaline burns, so we're gonna wear our rubber gloves. Safety glasses to keep the stuff out of our sweet eyeballs. Uh, and then, of course, we need to mix it. Now, you can mix up your perlite in a wheelbarrow if you want. Uh, I like to use big plastic flexi tubs like this one. They're really easy to work with. Um, they're quite cheap, and hey, they're actually really handy later on for garage storage and things like that once you've built your oven. You're going to find the mixing ratio for the perlite render in the written instructions that are on our website. You can go there and download them right now. The link's in the description. And guys, please make sure you do read those written instructions in full because there's information contained in those instructions that's not in these videos, right? So please don't rely on these videos alone. Always read the written instructions, have a really good read of those. But if you do find yourself having any questions, don't hesitate to just get in touch with us. Right, so I've already mixed up my perlite render, so I've added water and I've mixed it really thoroughly. Remember, you can use a, a shovel or a trowel to, to mix the perlite together. Um, if you do have access to a mixing drill, it is a beautiful, beautiful thing uh, because it makes life so much easier because we're, we're mixing up a significant volume of material. Uh, you know, it's, it's not just a little bucket, we're mixing up several of these big tubs of this uh, this render. So it's kind of nice to have a mixing drill if you can, but if you can't get your hands on one, don't worry, the shovel will do just fine. Now, before you do the render over the chicken wire that you've uh, installed, we really recommend you do any tiling that you're planning on doing around the oven so that you don't have to cut the tiles to a very precise curve. Uh, let's say you don't do it in a, that order. You, you do your render and then you decide to tile around the render. Well, now you've got to cut your tiles on this very precise curve, you, you've, you know, in order to get them to fit around the render. Whereas if you lay the tiles first, you're putting them in, you know, you've got 50 mil of render that's gonna come down over the top of that tile so this edge can be cut very roughly. You'll never ever see it. Okay, so that's, that's why we recommend uh, tiling around your oven before you do the render. 
Um, we've got a video which actually walks you through some tips for tiling around your oven. Uh, so for making templates, uh, we actually did it on an earlier build. Uh, you can check that out, uh, the link is in the description. Uh, and you can see the process that we go through for tiling around the oven. We've got some good tips in there to follow on how to do that. Uh, before we start applying it, just a consistency that you want to mix to. Um, you want to make sure, firstly, that the perlite is fully wetted out. Um, and then you don't want it to mix it into a soup. Okay, if we add too much water, we're going to end up with a slurry. Uh, we're not after a slurry, we're after something that's between halfway between slurry and dry. Uh, so you should be able to just grab a ball of it and throw it up and catch it, and for it not to all run through your fingers is uh, one good way of, of seeing it. Once we've mixed some up, the first step in the conservative method is to do the base coat. Uh, and really, that's, that's quite fun actually, because we're not too fussed about the shape of it. In fact, we, we want it to end up with sort of a coarse surface because we're going to be doing another layer of render over that surface. So, and we want that next layer to bond, to grab onto that surface. And if we make the first layer really smooth, the second layer isn't going to want to bond to it very well. So we're going to deliberately make it quite coarse. How you do it? Get some in your hands and you're just going to work it into the chicken wire all, all over the whole dome and you're just trying to really build up maybe uh, maybe at the most you're building up 20 mil, so it's what, three quarters of an inch. Um, so we're not trying to build up much thickness at all. We just want to work it all the way into the chicken wire and into all the little voids uh, and just get just a, a layer over the whole dome to start. Again, we're not aiming for, you know, working on the shape too much. We're just trying to basically cover the chicken wire. This is our goal, but to work it into the chicken wire as we do that. And when we're done, we just run our fingers over it and that'll just roughen up the surface a little bit so that next time, for the next layer, we can come back and build it up a bit thicker. All right, so then once I've done this, Given it this treatment, I then let it sit for at least 12 hours. You want this to set before you do the next coat. Um, and But I, I like to tackle it. I like to get back into it as soon as possible. Afterwards, while it's still kind of green, the it hasn't dried out. Um, so it's, it's still got a little bit of um, moisture in it. Uh, it just means that it's much easier to get the next coat to bond. Now, if you don't have... Uh, the option of doing that if basically you don't you've only got time to do one coat and then maybe in a week You can get back and do the next coat. The trick is to get the surface wet The best method that I've found is actually to cover it with old towels Right just get some old towels or even an old sheet But towels work really well because they're quite thick and they hold a lot of water Cover the dome with the towels and then hose it down with water Right? And those towels will hold the water and soak it into the, the render that you, you did maybe a week ago. And they start to get it wet. And so you come back and you might wet it up a few times over an hour. So getting, getting some more water onto the towels. And then when you take the towels off, if I'm, I start, let's say I'm side this side, fold the towels back and leave them on that side. Uh, so they're still keeping that side wet. And then I can apply my, my render and it's gonna bite really well to that layer because it's nice and damp and the, the fresh uh, you know, wet mortar isn't hitting a dry surface and then drying and sort of shrinking and pulling away from the surface. Because the surface is wet, it just sits on it and it'll set and bond really well to it. Uh, so that's basically the process for doing the perlite render uh, in the conservative method. You build it up in several layers. So first layer, just real basic scratch coat. The second layer, I would get my float out and I'd start using it to get the rough shape of the dome. And then on the third layer, which is usually for me, is that's I've built up my, my full 50 mil of thickness. Uh, then I make sure I'm using that, that float to shape that surface and give you the nice round dome that I'm after. Um, so other couple of other things that I will mention, it doesn't matter if you're a little thin, let's say you're 30 mil thick in one spot and 75 mil thick in another spot, it doesn't really matter because the ceramic fiber blanket is what's doing all the insulating. 
okay? It's, it's not the perlite. The perlite d certainly helps, don't get me wrong, but the blanket is three times better as an insulator. So to get the equivalent insulation of 50 mil of ceramic fiber blanket using perlite render, I would need to build up 150 mil of perlite, like you know, a huge amount of it, just to get the same insulation that I'm getting from my 50 mil blanket. So the blanket is doing all the insulating. This, this perlite render is effectively a protective shell to you know, protect the oven and the blanket that's underneath it. Uh, but if we do build it up to about that 50 mil mark, uh, it, it's very strong. The reason we don't do, say, just a 10 mil layer is, well, that would be quite weak. So if someone leaned on it uh, or bumped into it, they would, they would just punch straight through it. But at 30 to 50 mil thick, you could stand on it. Uh, and I'm half expecting some small child might decide to stand on one of my ovens in the future and I don't want to get a phone call. Uh, so something I didn't mention before is your polystyrene float is not only a tool for applying render uh, and helping you sort of smooth it out into a round shape, but it's also a gauge. Uh, as you run it across the surface, you might notice that it skips spots. Uh, and so I, I can see there's a little spot uh, just, just here where I bring that over and it doesn't touch in the middle there. And so I can add a little bit of material there and just work that in. And now when I run over that surface, I'm picking up the whole, it's, it's, it's contacting it the whole way. And so it's helping me, it's showing me where the high spots and the low spots are. Uh, so that I can fill them.